Okay then, we're at the disfavored camp. Now, we've got six days until Kairos Day of Swords. As it happens, I have since learned from some of the uh, earlier comments uh, on YouTube in response to the VODs that I've been posting there, that if you wait until the Day of Swords has passed, and then read the edict, like you just pass time until that point, you get a whole year until the edict takes effect. And that was actually intended by the devs to kind of be a nod to the, the restrictions of edicts. Yeah, when you're following the letter of the law, uh, or the letter of, uh, of an edict, it can cr give rise to interesting loopholes. Very interesting loop loopholes. Right, uh, let's have a quick look over what we were up to, as it's been a few days. Now, Vendrin's Well, Forge Bound Iron, return to uh, Isotanis. Um, Tani Sybil was attempted to arm her soldiers with the iron shipment uh, the settlers found washed ashore. You managed to find the remaining iron inside one of the settlers' home, return to the disabled camp, and tell Isotanis the news, and also the Battle of Echocor Crossing. Uh, your forces have prevailed at Echocor Crossing and Tripnettle Wilderness. Return to Ash's tent and inform the Archons of our success. Okay, so we had more or less at the end of the last stream uh, managed to Honest. wind things up and complete a bunch of side quests, and in fact, a major quest. The Archons are in the war tent. Very well. They will, of course, be the last people that we go and see, because uh, this is not my first rodeo. I understand how RPGs work. Uh, you're an Earthshaker. Have you got something to say? No. Can I talk to any of the Earthshakers? Uh, I can apparently talk to the Stone Shield. A pungent odor emanates from the sack slung over the soldier's back. Well, okay. Uh, I'd kind of like you to be the one that I'm controlling, though. Can I force that? Got an Iron Walker. I'm not sure if that's necessarily something that we can talk to. Stay vigilant, Fate Binder. Uh, very well. Let's go and have a, have a, have a look. Uh, keep an eye on those Scarlet Chorus over there. Hey, hey, there's there's a Scarlet Chorus with me, you scoundrel. And also, actually, kind of Lantry. I, I'm not sure if Lantry is Scarlet Chorus or if Lantry is now effectively in my service and let's kind of dodge the whole Scarlet Chorus thing. But uh, Well, let's go to the Iron Marshal and hand in... The iron, first and foremost. She folds her arms, looking at you expectantly. Um. Hmm. Who's the strongest warrior in your cohort? Modesty demands I omit myself, but if I had to form uh, the legion into one giant phalanx, I'd have Severus the Younger and Barak take the corners. Severus has been at this since before I was born, and Barak... Wow. She hesitates. Well, what? I'm neither neither deaf nor fragile. Say what you're going to say. I was going to say that you're perhaps one of the best warriors in the outfit. But look, good luck getting you to wear your regulation uniform. You're a good soldier, Barak. But you know you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fair enough. Um... You're sticking me with the problem child of your cohort? Uh, no, I'm going to be... He's one of my my companions for now. I'm honoured to be assigned one of your finest. Ah, there we go. Um, the honour is mine. When the campaign is over, I hope you'll accompany me in hanging more Vendrian savages along the road. Think of the stories we'll have to trade. Ah, I mean, uh, not entirely cool on that one, but... Sure, alright. Uh, what was I expecting? Who do I need to hand this into? Uh, Isotanis, the news. Okay. Thank you very much, Saitanga, for the six-month resub. That's very, very kind of you. Saitanis. Uh, who be you? Oh, Severus. No, Saitanis, maybe? Oh, Isotanis, sorry. There we are. Hello. Let's have a quick chat, you and I. Have you found the iron yet? Isotanis gives you a look full of expectation. Lie. By the time we got there, the Oathbreakers had picked it clean. Nothing left but scrap. No, that's not true. Here it is. Good thing the Oathbreakers didn't get their hands on much. Wow, 1,000 rings. Okay. I can't tell you what it means to have this back in our hands. I'll make sure to tell my superior about what you've done for the Legion. Very well. You have lost forge-bound iron ingots. Something, need something else? I imagine we could have used that in a lot of other ways. Interesting. Let me have a look at your wares, please, and thank you. Uh, right. I have been told that I should really equip this as an... Uh, as a quick item. Oh, I can't. Oh, uh, okay, on an accessory slot then. Very well. 
Apparently it's going to give me all sorts of uh, good things to go. Um, Wolfbound Dagger. Let's have a look at you. What could I get you that would be particularly nice? I uh, don't want an Earthshaker staff, obviously, but uh, we've got this shield here. Let's have a look. 0 0.7, parry 25, dodge plus 6, versus this. Okay, recovery 0 0.3, dodge 24, endurance 5. Endurance plus 20, wow, okay. Um, I mean, it's a... Ultimately, Barrack is my tank. That is Barrack's role. I can't force Barrack to wear anything, unfortunately. Uh, this item can be improved with the Spire Forge upgrade, okay. Uh, but I, I don't believe Barra can ever leave their armor. But the shield, maybe. The shield might be worth giving to them. Did I just purchase that or not? I can't actually tell. Oh, no, no, I've got to pop, pop it down there, don't I? Of course, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and trade. There we go. And you can have this one back in exchange. There we are. That's good enough for me. Thank you very much. Now we uh, control lightning plus one plus one. Hmm. Okay. We do execution. I mean, we've all got that one right now. Let's go and have a quick chat with a couple of people. Severs. Welcome back, Fatebinder. Severs leans back and crosses his arms. What is it you need? Uh, nothing at the moment. Thank you, though. Uh, let's go and have a quick talk with uh, Pentabor. What might I do for you? See something you like? Well, I mean, maybe. Thank you very much, Boscaro, for the 42nd month of subscribing. Thank you so much. Yay, another Avax stream. May I consider you an old friend by now? I think after 42 months, yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, come on, well, sh everyone's my friend from the moment I meet them and until they give me a reason not to be my friend. Uh, the old part, uh, that's, 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 I think that's down to individual people what they want to consider an old friend, but uh, it's fine. All right, let's have, uh, let's have a quick see. Now, do you have any accessories that I might like? Uh, nothing in here that I particularly want to see. Uh, got some armor, but nothing particularly good, I don't think. Sun Soldier's Javelin. No, I can't imagine that we're going to find anything of particular use here for my my party. Especially considering I'm not really sure what we're going to be giving Lantry at all. Alright, but it's good to see all of the, uh, the Earth Shakers here. Now, I forget what it is that Marcus can teach us. Let's have a quick look. It's Favor, Favor 2. Welcome back, Fatebinder. Lucia here was just mentioning that only because you asked uh, that you've been a real asset to the disfavored ever since you arrived. Not that anyone expected different. He beams at you with pride. <laughs> I like that. I, I love the, that uh, things change throughout as a result. Legion boasts so much honor. Why are they his favorite? No, we don't need to ask that one. Uh, do some tra training. Of course, Red Binder. Mark pounds his fist on his armor and salute. Okay. Um, I could take parry up a little bit, yeah. I think that would be fine. Got plenty of coin. That gives us a little bit of a rank. You could do with it. Bump, there you go, get a level. I wouldn't mind taking your two-hander up. I also wouldn't mind getting your one-handed up a little bit, Lantry, but let's go for the two-hander. Bit expensive, but sure, let's get you all the way up to level five. And there we go. You learn something every day. Three level ups right there. Well, if it isn't the Fate Binder. What can we do for you? Well, I want to check out what training you are. Finally, some fun to break up the monotony of this siege. Got dodge. There we go. I don't think anyone is actually going to go for it, but uh, well, I'll get anyone who's particularly close up to the next point, at least. Um, sure, I'll pop, pop a point for everyone in dodge. 
I'm not actually sure that's going to be particularly useful for us. I, I think it's parry or dodge for most, but we'll see. Thank you very much, Rui, for the 30-month resubscription. Very kind of you, mate. Very kind. Ah... I would like to get to having a bit more of a, a schedule for my streams, but uh, for the last like couple of months, things have been crazy, and I don't imagine they're going to be uncrazy enough that I can have a schedule until I've resolved my housing situation, and I actually know where I'm going to live in like two months' time. Uh, up until then, things are going to be a little bit playing it by ear, but I do hope to get a schedule out there at least within the next you know, three, four months, and actually have something where we can we can know to show up at a certain time, etc, etc. Here we go. I do believe the coffee has arrived. Thank you very much, Shilab. There we are. Now we can begin properly. But before we do, let's go ahead and get some levels, shall we? Uh, let's bring up our character screen. Right. Now, I'm very tempted to go for more wits, but... Our lore is already quite high. Um, I mean, this would be nice. Vitality would also kind of be nice. Um, I really wasn't imagining ending up in a situation where I was going to be full-on going with law, but sure, okay. We'll take that. Save. And let's see you... I wouldn't mind getting your quickness up a little bit more. You seem to really, really thrive on that. That being said, getting your ability to... Uh, your athletics up a little bit more would be good as well. Um, but no, we're going to go with your quickness, I think. Finally, Barrack. I'm strongly favouring the idea of increasing your vitality a bit more, but... Getting parry up would be nice. Hmm. Yeah, let's actually go with uh, with increasing your finesse. Right, let's have a look now. Got one point to spend. Now, as far as a Punisher goes, that's actually kind of cool. Um, gain a chance to attack enemies as they engage you, or increase one hand and two handed melee weapon damage. That's always good. Uh, but I'm sort of feeling more in favor of these ones. Also, thank you very much, Roth uh, Key, for the resubscription there, four months in a row. And to Akarin for the cheer there. Thank you so much for the support, everyone. Uh, you haven't been able to contribute for a long time, but now the business is established. Here's a small gesture of appreciation. Thanks for all the awesome content these last four years or so. Oh, that is so, so incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, that is, no, genuinely, thank you so much. It's totally unnecessary, but it is deeply appreciated. Thank you. Right, uh, boost in movement speed for a short time, or allows back to engage an additional enemy. I wouldn't mind that one, actually. Uh, fight defensively, gaining a bonus to armor. That might be nice. But I honestly think we're going to go with seasoned veteran. And make Barak able to, to hold two people in combat with him. That would be fantastic. As for Verse, let's have a look at you, Verse. We've got your arrow is particularly nice. Uh, attacks made with bows gain armor penetration. While only wearing light armor gain a bonus to dodge. Or Verse pins the target's feet with an arrow, hobbling them so they move more slowly. Alternatively, killing spree. After a kill, Verse will strike twice with her attacks for a short time. Uh, when an enemy strikes Verse, she gains passive bonus to dodge and parry. Until combat ends. This effect stacks. Hmm. A mocking eye inverse taunts her, enraging them and forcing them to attack her for a brief time. No, I think we'll go with... I think we're going to go with either Killing Spree or Know Your Enemy. I think, I think it's going to be Know Your Enemy. There we are. And finally, let's have a look at uh, my character. Now... In the comments in on YouTube, I have been told to check out the leadership tree. Apparently, it is very, very good and worth looking at. The party gains two additional quick item slots and consumables used while in combat are more effective. Or, the party gains use of one additional weapon set and can switch weapons in combat with a lower recovery penalty. Uh, mark enemy. Uh, adds a marking effect to the thrust ability. Attacks against the marked target. Gain bonus accuracy. Mark lasts until the enemy dies. Uh, I mean, maybe... 
It's certainly a possibility. The magic tree is something I'm kind of liking. We could gain this energy shield. Arcane Charge at the spell Breached Affliction to Thrust Attacks also grants a bonus to magic skills for a short time after using Thrust. Charge up your magic staff. We're not going to be using that. Code of Magic Channel. A burst of energy through your magic staff. No, we're not going to be using that one either. Well, you've already got Sneak. You could have Duelist while wielding a melee weapon. Sometimes Repost misses melee attacks. Um, sometimes Repost missed melee attacks, rather. It is quite nice, but... Um, sure, we're going to go down the leadership tree because it seems to be very unique to us. And... Um, I think Mark Enemy might be a nice one. We are often in combat, and if we could mark our foe and give everyone else a, a bit of a, a better time taking them down, I think that would be pretty pretty cool. Okay, so with that, it's time for us to head on in and talk with the Archons. Castle was outside my window, pulling funny faces at me. Ah! He doesn't know what a consummate professional I am. You don't give these Earthbreakers enough credit? Uh-oh. What's being said? Uh, open enough credit. Even beasts can be uh, begin to see patterns in your simpleton strategies. If there's any pattern to my strategies, it's one of the relentless victory. The Tearsmen excel at deception, but falter at fair fight. Probably explains why you surround yourself with them. But who's been more deceitful than your second, Cairn? And wasn't he the expert on siege warfare? What's your plan for dealing with the walls now? Standing Pyramid? The Archon of Stone was punished for his actions. If you want to talk guilt by association, I would be happy to hold you accountable for the collective crimes of the Chorus. And any disfavored warrior can take ten of these hillfolk with a fruit knife. Properly armed, it's not even fair. I mean, you know, why are you taking so long to win the fight then, to be fair? How can we trust your rabble not to turn at his last moment? How many of your conscripts have family bonds to the Vendrian Guard? It is decided. The Disfavored will take the vanguard of the assault. It is the only way to assure success before the edict comes to pass. Graven Ash's roar pulses your eardrums, his face reddening as he yells. Oh, you're so young. We can forgive you for being stupid. <coughs> Without your Archon of Stone to bring down those walls, you're out of your element. Only the Chorus has the numbers required to swarm the walls from all sides. We will lead the vanguard of this battle. Wow, I, I, I feel like just like, just hollering from the sidelines and starting to chant fight, 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 honestly, the way these two are going. The best the Chorus could accomplish would be leaving a ramp-shaped pile of corpses propped up against the walls for my warriors to use. Their fortifications are not a concern. Even understaffed, my Earthshakers could breach the masonry in short order. Okay. Another brilliant idea. Cairn's cult is, we're sure, every bit as trustworthy and sane as the late Archon of Stone himself. Uh, you did notice the spire at the center of the citadel? Uh, hard to miss it, being only the tallest thing on the horizon and such. Certainly your Earth Mages won't do anything stupid like... Say, breaking the Spire's foundation? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, Cain, a soul of the hills. Cain is the Archon of Stone, master of earth and soil, destroyer of mountains and cities. Cain is the reluctant leader of the Earthshaker Guild, though he is less their teacher and more their object of study. We've already read this one, but uh, refreshing my memory. The voices in the rat lazily twirls his scepter. You hear the voices in your head. We love saying the name Cairn just to watch him squirm. Graven Ash had so much hair back before he met us. Wow. That's a low blow. I'm gonna be honest, that's just not cricket. That's like kicking him in the balls. It's just not what... Ugh. Even for you, my lord. I trust them more than I trust your circus of rapists, sell swords, and turn wow. tearsmen. Archon Ash turns his head and, upon seeing you in the tent, relaxes his posture. Tunon's fate binder has arrived. The war tent falls silent, and all eyes turn to you, expectantly. Well. Thank you very much, Hunter Delta. I I was a little bit surprised with how well that attempt at the, the voice's um, voice, I guess, came out. Our operation in Echo Hall Crossing and Triple Net Wilderness was successful. 
Why aren't you two marching toward Ascension Hall? My mission in Echo Hole Crossing and Triple uh, Trip Nettle, sorry, Wilderness was successful, with a little help from the disfavored. I was victorious in Echo Hole Crossing and Triple uh, Trip Nettle Wilderness, despite the constant ineptitude of the course. Done, Beckering. Um, they like me. I don't see a reason not to to push that a little bit more. And to be fair, they did actually help. They did. Let's be honest. Everyone helped. Everyone did what they needed to do. I am going to be honest, though, that this favor probably did a little bit less, I feel. Especially getting across the crossing. But... I don't know. This is, this is a difficult one. I miss my glare silently. That would have been perfect for this moment. Uh, hmm. It is between these two. I'm not going to pick sides and I'm not going to pick a fight. Yet. The disfavored were a little bit clumsy, honestly. But, nah, it is what it is. Why aren't you two marching? Nothing would please us more than to be done with this wretched valley. Perhaps if we had more support from the disfavored and from the court. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Now that we are all assembled, I want reports. The Scarlet Chorus was going to resolve the Oathbreaker presence in the Outer Valley. What became of that? Well... Yes, what did become of that? We should know already, yet we do not. If we are not mistaken, the Fate Binder played a pivotal role in this uh, operation. Fifth Eye, shed light on this baffling question. Well... The Fate Binder did indeed assist the Chorus. In a fashion, the Oathbreakers were cut down, but the Fatebinder's wrath spared none, and Captain Pallox Florian was not taken alive. Much to our disappointment, the Fatebinder seemed to have applied disfavor to justice to Florian. Such a waste. And look what showing them mercy has done for us. I mean... My scouts report seeing Chorus thugs freeing your camp, defecting back to the enemy. They are abusing your mercy, and you either don't notice or don't care. The former is negligence. The latter is treachery. Well, those are big words to use. I was asked to lend a warrior's hand and did just that. Be grateful or be silent. I disagree. He would have made a perfect captive, but he was a raging zealot with a death wish. Capture wasn't an option. They are Oathbreakers. They've abused our mercy once. Uh, I'm going to go with this one. I mean, I did honestly want to take him a captive, but I, I chose poorly. Given the situation, I didn't think saying that his brother was alive was going to get him because I'd already told someone. Basically, I chose poorly before the engagement, and then that caught up with me. A mistake that I will learn from as I sip my coffee. Iron Marshal, I understand we've established a foothold across the Matani. Report. Wait a second, what did I pick? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, cool. I did pick the right one. I'm, I'm not sure why I gained favor, but okay. Um... Very well. Securing the Matani was a gruesome affair. An agent of the School of Tides still lives, and the river was turned against us. Despite our losses, the day ended in success at the Echo Call Crossing, though victory came at a great cost. When it came time to secure the nearby Echo Hall village, there was a distressing discovery. The village had been stashing iron weaponry, no doubt stolen from our supply lines. Commander Antio wished to burn the village, but the chorus disagreed, and the fate binder back to their claim. Well. Their leader, Captain Matani Sibyl, was bested in combat, but taken captive by the Scarlet Chorus. Despite the disfavor taking the lead on the operation, the fate binder felt it necessary to apply chorus doctrine to the captives. A most wise judgment, good fate binder. The Oathbreaker Captain will no doubt provide hours of entertainment. And perhaps even some usable information. Okay, that's a little bit sinister. The Poison Rat hurls his scepter into the air with a loud chuckle, gingerly snatching the scepter out of the air as it falls. You hear the voice in your head. She has been most delectable treat, that one. So up oh, though, right. She has been a most delectable treat, that one. So obstinate, so in 
articulate in her flailing defiance. Some things are best savored in slow, tantalizing doses. We must thank you once again for delivering her unto us. This will be just like Stalwart, when your own conscripts chose suicide over service to the chorus. She'll be no different than the others, petulant, uncooperative, and motivated to feed you false information. I mean... I'll go over this meaningless. Resolving the edict matters most of all. Perhaps some Tearsmen are smart enough to choose death over being associated with the Starlet Chorus. Odd, you think the Tearsmen so pathetic and harmless, yet you seem pathologically afraid of what they might teach the Chorus. I mean... I do feel that... In this particular instance, Graven Ash seems quite reluctant with the idea of taking captives. I, I, I understand that he's reluctant with the idea of and, uh, uh, bringing them into the chorus and then they just run off again. But he, he must know the, the voices of Narat have ways of making people talk, even without their mouths. Mostly, I don't know, by eating them or something. Who knows? The rumors are fairly rife, but I'm sure Graven Ash understands that the voices of Narat must have ways of getting certain information. Whether he believes it's useful or whether the voices is just mad or something, but it does feel a bit full on that he's constantly dismissing the idea. It, it, it's... it's ah. Honestly, they, they do both argue quite a lot, and the voice of Narat is, no, is no better, but I do feel the, the chorus is getting more results. Calling me a coward in not so many words? I mean... You and Narat are cut from the same cloth. Well, you are kind of hidden in a tent instead of on the front lines. Look, I'm, I'm Celtic. I believe the general should be literally in front of the army leading the charge. Enough! If these are my allies, why bother with the enemy? Even the low-born Oathbreakers have the honor and decency to- The Archon of War slams his maul to the ground with bone-rattling thud. Oh, finish your thought, old chap. They have the honor and decency to... To what? To abide by some sort of deal you made with them? The voice of Narat spins his scepter in the palm of his hand. You hear the voices in your head. Can you not hear the treachery in his words? How can we be sure he hasn't been selling this whole campaign? His legion boasts of victory after victory, and yet these half-wit oathbreakers suddenly give the disfavored pause. Scowling at the Archon of Secrets, Graven Ash says nothing, his body heaving with agitation. If you two are unwilling to work together, as Fatebinder of Toon and I will order you to do so. A truce with the oathbreakers? Is this true? Hmm. I'm going to remain silent on this one. I'm going to let them talk it out. Then the impasse is clear. We both wish for the honor of leading this final assault on the Vendrian Guard. Since Tunon is not here to select the rightful bearer of this honor, we must turn to the Archon's proxy. As always. With whom do you stand? The voices on Narat's mask tilt sideways as he lurches forward, wiggling his scepter at you. Now is not the time for your compromise. Uh, for compromise, one of us will have the honor of completing this glorious conquest. We know you will choose wisely. The tent grows quiet as the gathering looks to you in anticipation. Hmm. See, I think they'll get in each other's way if I send them both. Take care, Majestic Ram. Thanks for dropping by, mate. I'll catch your stream the next chance I get. Thank you so much for dropping by. And again, everyone, if you're not already following Majestic Ram, now's your chance. Again, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Thank you very much, 4C, for the Tier 2 subscription. My lord, 10 months in a row. Thank you very much. And also, I missed Floppy... Uh, Hot Potato, thank you very much for the 12 month resub there. One year of subscribing to amazing streams, though I've looked for far longer. Thank you, Abbott. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Um, well, see, I've got. Uh, they're not as, as fond of me, at least 
I, I could balance them or I could go all in with Graven Ash. It seems that generally my playstyle has has built Graven, uh, the, the disfavored um, favor with me. But I just, I feel that the Scarlet Chorus, as far as my character's upbringing would be concerned, now if we put aside his teaching since joining the Fate Binders, I feel that my character would probably favor the methods of the Scarlet Chorus. And, and honestly, a, a lot of the ideology that, that the strongest should rule um, basically by virtue of killing anyone above them if they're not strong enough to be able to deal with any upstart assassination attempt, then really, are they, should they be in control of the army? It, I mean, you know, there's, there's all sorts of um, <laughs> fallacies about that, that kind of thing, but um, it's very easy to believe that if you're at top, it, you, because you deserve to be there, no, and there's quite a lot of ways that you can get into the top without deserving it, but still, I feel that, that the more primal nature of the Scarlet Chorus would probably speak to my character's upbringing, and certainly so far, I feel that the Scarlet Chorus have been more helpful. So we're going to be going with that. Scarlet Chorus will lead. You stand with the madman and his rabble? I am shocked. I counted you amongst our allies, and your name was held in some regard amongst my troops. Sparks dance from around the Archon's Iron Regalia as Graven Ash fumes. Uh. So be it. I will add another name to our record of hate. Out of respect for the blue flag troops, I won't have you slain where you stand. If you leave my camp and don't look back. Oh, interesting. A wise choice. The Scarlet Chorus will be honored to silence the last of the Ventrian Guard insult. Graven Ash. We hereby order you to stand down and remain here at camp until we have secured the citadel. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the voices in the rat seem so happy with this. This <laughs> is so happy. My lord. If the chorus leads the charge, they will fail. I will not sit idly by while the edict claims my legion. The disfavored will carve a path to the citadel on our own, if that's what it takes. The air crackles with electricity as Graven Ash lifts his maul to strike. Oh. What? Have I made some terrible, terrible choice and this is like, yeah, rocks fall, everyone dies, the game. Fatebinder. Your vision comes into focus, as does the feeling of your hand on your shoulder. Are you with me, Fatebinder? You don't look hurt, but say something. Something. I'm sorry, I'm going to do that. I, it's what I would do in real life. Ah, good. Same old Fatebinder. Was worried there for a second that you had been seriously hurt. Your guardian here came to your rescue. The Crimson Spear taps Barrack on the shoulder with a hearty smile. Barak turns to greet the Jasher with cold stare. I wasn't trying to save you. I was trying to save her. He points the verse and sighs. And what happened, you bleeding hard iron shit tower? <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend that was the coffee making that laugh. That was a genuine laugh. That was, that was from the pit of my stomach, my lord. Verse, wow. Verse crosses her arms and glares. I picked her up and she stabbed me. Put a dent in my side that I won't forget. So I put her down and dragged you out here to recuperate. <laughs> wow. Uh, what is it with you two? No, it's obvious what it is. They're on different sides of the war. Um, hmm. Though I... I am going to ask again. A little bit. Why did you think she needed saving? More than me! This is no time to narrate our life stories. If the edict comes crashing down on our heads, none of it will matter anyway. Oh, that is a fair point, actually. On that note, better to leave now while we're well parted. You've made your allegiances clear. I hope you serve a good long term with the Scarlet Chorus, and that we never meet on the wrong side of the battlefield. 
Hmm. I need to make a decision, and I sided with the army that has the numbers. You are too quick to label me an enemy. This isn't about choosing sides. It's about resolving the edict. Stay with me as my deputy at least that long. Then I will release you from service. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. It, it literally was uh, a choice of who I thought was going to be the better one to take it. I've had enough of your justifications and empty values. Your actions speak a great deal louder Ooh, than your slippery Oh, interesting. Fear one versus loyalty. Ah, I see. How could I put my trust in an enemy of the great general? Why shouldn't I simply kill you now, traitor? Barak roars with an inhuman fury and shoves you with all his strength. He raises his hands as if to strangle you. And then lowers them, trembling with restraint. No. You aren't worth it. I have too much to accomplish in service to the great general to deal with you now. When we meet in the field of battle, I won't have any reservations about cutting off your breath. Hmm. Uh, no. Athletics 38. Barak takes the blow with only the slightest grunt of displeasure. He raises to full height, towering overhead like a statue of iron. Now that I have your attention, submit. Only I have the strength to break this siege. You are incompetent, and this war will take you like a row of wheat before the scythe. You would put your trust in thieves and rapists before the Archon of War. But I will allow that this stalemate has drawn on for too long, and your influence has been felt. I will remain at your side, if only to see this edict undone. Beyond that is anyone's guess. Yeah, that's fair. That's all I asked anyway. The voices of Norad was already departed the camp, and I'm headed there now. Come, join us. We would be honored to have you join us for the assault. He lets out a wicked chuckle as he turns it apart. I mean, not like there's anything left for you here. I... Well... Yeah... Oops. Ah, well, I guess that, that's, that's settled that one. Uh, right, we've made your side known in the confrontation you witnessed between the two Archons. Speak with the Fifth Eye at the Scarlet Chorus camp to begin the assault. I wonder if there is a path of neutrality where, you, where I could have just said, no, you both attack, or, and just continue to skirt between them. It's very, very interesting. Okay, well, we've got to get down to the Scarlet Chorus camp. And hopefully, we'll be, uh, well, I imagine we're going to be better, better welcome there. Still, it does feel a bit bad that uh, as a representative of the Archon of Justice, we have been seen to pick sides. Hmm. This may take some fixing. Okay, let's make our way down. At the very least, we still have Barrack with us, though. I wonder if that could have gone any other way. I, sh I should imagine it could have. Right. Where is the fifth eye? Um, Scarlet Fury. Oh, Sirin. I see. Also, close the throat. Night. Wow, there's more people here. All right. Have a look around. Uh, there's Scarlet Fury. Another Scarlet Fury. Death Nell. Let's have a chat with you. Fadebinder, Death Nell nods in your direction. Now, what do you need? Uh, nothing right now, actually. Uh, anyone else around here? Uh, Varia. Varia slowly cleans a rusting blade and nods at you with a distant stare. I wonder how she's doing. Probably not the greatest, honestly. Vittles, that's an interesting name. Pale and wide-eyed, the Scarlet Chorus conscript takes slow, deep breaths as he shuffles with a nervous energy. As soon as your eyes meet his, he looks away in panic, bowing his head and turning his body aside. Like a live soldier, this place eats the weak. Um, hmm. You there. What's your name, lad? Y you couldn't mean m me? Could you? Captain? He turns to face you, but refuses to meet your gaze, cheeks tinged red. His body tenses his chest, putting forward... Even uh, puffing forward, even as he stammers and stumbles over his reply. W Walden, 
my ma named me Walden because she knew I'd be as tall as the mountains, but here they only call me Vittles. Hmm. Okay. New to the chorus? Captain is a southern term. Kairos armies have commanders, and I'm neither. I shouldn't be here. His eyes widen as his voice raises to a near yell. The chorus! I don't know what I was thinking. It, I'm not like these people. He looks around the camp. I'm going to die here. Or at least, I hope I die here. And soon. And to think I... His voice falls silent. His body slumps. Well, too late for regrets. Um, you made a vow to the Arkham of Secrets. Only death can release you from that pledge. And just why is this a mistake? Did something, someone take the vow for you? I'm feeling generous today, so I'll give you some pointers. Um... No, I'm going to ask him, you know, did someone take the vow for him? I'm, I'm going to... Well, this is going to probably prompt him to explain what he did, which would probably kill his allies. But maybe he needs to hear it a bit. Or maybe this is the worst thing for him to hear, but still we're going to go with this one. No, but I was forced to take the vow. He places a flat hand on his neck in the pantomime of a blade. They slew my power right in front of me and told me I was next if I didn't join the chorus. I've never served in the village watch. I didn't know it would be like this. Hmm. Never served in the watch? How old are you? How old? He started to look across his face. I'll be... Um, Papa said I was born in 418, so that makes me... He looks at his fingers to count, though the gesture seems entirely an act, and he trails off mumbling incoherently. Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm feeling generous today, so I'll give you some pointers. P pointers, Captain? He scratches the back of his head, confused. Of what sort? Uh, you need new boots, maybe he's in helmet, take this. Strike him playfully at first. Come on, raise your fists and defend yourself. I'll show you how to survive. Maybe later, how to kill. Tell him some advice. Listen up. You need to act tough, yet. Keep a low profile, for starters. Um, I'm not trying to get the lad killed. But this is a place where... Getting decent gear would probably only make him a target for someone who wanted the gear and was better at killing than him. Teaching him how to defend himself, especially while he has nothing of particular worth to take, would make him a prickly prospect for someone. Even if it wasn't particularly hard for them to kill him, it's like, what's the point? They'd get barely anything from it. And he, who knows, he might actually be capable of defending himself. Or giving him po pointers on being a bit more sneaky about it. Look tough whilst not being tough. Stay below the radar. I think this would probably keep him alive more. I think this... It's one of these two. It's definitely not this. Um, no, I'm going to go go for some advice. Ah, I, I never would have thought it. He straightens his back. Head craned as he gives you his full, enraptured attention. You're awfully clever, Captain, he murmurs, deep in thought. That's it. Don't get yourself killed. Um, oh, I can I can keep teaching him. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, if he's also capable of being sneaky about it, but can actually protect himself, that would probably help. Okay. He takes the first hit, but manages to avoid the next. Surprisingly, death, despite his gangliness and timidity. Best if I don't, Cap. Uh, uh, Master Fate Pinder. He ducks his head shyly. I don't think Two -to Tooth would like it none if he saw me training. And I've taken enough licks from him la to last me the rest of my lifetime. All right. That's good enough. Or do not let your guard down. Strike back and watch your leg work. Um. Hmm. No, I, I, that kind of thing is that backing down here, I think, will get him killed. And if that's already a lesson he's learned to let other people push him around, that is based, uh, honestly, in the Scarlet Chorus, I think that's quite, quite likely to make him someone's meal, not even figuratively speaking. So go for a harder one. With a scramble and a surprised yelp, he barely dodges a third of your blows, the first two knocking him backwards on his feet. Panting, he regains himself, avoiding your exaggerated and slowed strikes until he swells enough in confidence to punch back. It takes him a while, but eventually he lands a decently hard hit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Should I go further? No, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. He's got a bit of a bit of confidence. That's all I really wanted to give him. On top of like you know, keep your head down, but you know, don't don't shy away from things. Nice one. Okay, blend and mark and scarlet chorus. Okay. The trick is not to get hit, right, Captain? He scratches a hand through his matted, sweaty hair and grins warmly. Then, when the timing's right, you've got to strike back. Quick. That's it. Don't get yourself killed. Um. I might... How many rings have I got? I have no idea how many rings I've got. I doubt it would give me this option if I didn't. Um, but no, I, 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 think, I think the Scarlet Chorus is almost... It's less of, yeah, buy good equipment. It's, it's keep what you kill, more or less. Right? Okay, that's it. Don't get yourself killed. He beams up at you, face sheening with both sweat and adoration. Thank you, Captain. You've been, a real, you've been really nice to me. Uh, you're welcome. Just, you know... Don't, don't become, don't let it be something you expect from others, because you probably won't get it from anyone else. Uh, let's see, who we got? Uh, two Tooth, actually, okay. We've got a couple of new people. Uh, we've got Baz and Reg. We've got Night Yowl. Oh, what are these? Right click to lock. Can I find out anything about them? Edict of Execution. Are these beast men? I mean, one would assume they might be, but uh, it's possible that they might not. Scarlet Fury, let's have a quick word with you. How does he drop anchor if he can't take his armor off? Uh, I... that's... Keep your thoughts to yourself, Chorus Maggots. I, that was kind of rude, but I have been wondering the same thing. Uh, Two Tooth. We'll come... Yeah, actually, we will talk with Two Tooth. Do you mind? I've got rings on this next roll. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it again. Uh, you're going to keep saying the same thing? That's kind of annoying. Oh, well. All right, let's have a talk with Night Yowl. The hulking creature sizes you up as you approach. He doesn't appear impressed. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, I'm not sure who... I thought that was Night Yowl. Oh, well. Night Yowl, a young beast man, stands in the shadow of an enormous beast woman whose stature still manages to loom over you, even in her crouched position. The beast man's mouth froths with spittle that launches in every direction as he snarls at her. Night Yowl was promised worthy, tough prey for joining. But Beast Woman only allows Night Yowl to hunt weakest humans. Saves best kills for herself. He pounds the earth, causing a small fissure to erupt. Night Yowl was str second strongest of Stone Stalker, males before joining Scarlet Humans. Rutted even with Hundred Blood, with Tribes Prima. Was promised don't pack for abandoning tribe mates. Claws at throat. The crouched beast woman lets out a deafening cackle, her broad, sharp teeth appearing between each bellow. Strong stone stalker. Beast man worth rutting, she snorts. No, claws at throat sees only mewling first season cub before beast woman now. Sees only tenderfoot. Only weak whelp fit to chase injured, dying prey. Not best fighters on battlefield. There's no way I could do a female version of that. That's just off the card, so like it or lump it. Nat Yowl bears his teeth and lunges for the beast woman, but she is swift to stand. Heckles raised and calloused palm far larger than his head harshly pins him to the ground in one deft swipe. His face smashes into the earth with a whip-like crack of stone followed by a def uh, defeated whimper. Yeah, uh, that's pretty pretty much what I've seen Siri do to Ares on occasion, actually. Um, Close the throat stares down at you with as much regard as she might show the wild dogs that roam the camp. Human. Close the throat. Her nostrils flare as she inhales deeply, scouring her memory of, for your familiar scent. Then she counts her head curiously to one side and her keen amber eyes darken with a sudden and feral desire. Human smells of kith. A far northern tribe is strange. Human is hairless, blunt clawed and male, but smells good. Smells better than Night Yowl. Wow. Wow, poor, poor Night Yowl. I feel actually quite, quite bad for that. She grinds the beastman's face deep into the dirt before lifting her clawed and gnarled fingers off of him. He quickly scrambles to his feet to nurse his head. Well, ah, uh, 
Hmm. I mean, yeah. Hmm. Speak quickly, and maybe Beast Woman will listen. Uh, okay, we can go with Hunter. Bear your teeth in a wild, dangerous grin. You smelled right. I was a member of the Bounding Viper tribe, raised as the Prima's own brood. Or I wager I could take you. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I'll, I'll go with Hunter. You've gained favor with the Stone Stalker tribe and gained favor with the Scarlet Chorus. Claws of throat. The Beast Woman perks up at your boast. She sniffs you curiously, more thoroughly than before. Then she smacks her lips softly, longingly, beginning to slather and drool. For a moment, you think she'll make a grab for you, but she merely sits back on her haunches, relaxed and watching you, pleasantly peaked as she scratches the taut stretch of a hard-muscled stomach. Would like to hunt with human from Bounding Viper Tribe. Little Blunt Claw will join Beast Woman in hot slaughter of humans in one season soon, yes? Ah. Uh, well. I could ask what's going on here. Um, what tribe are you from, Beast? That seems a bit full on. I could ask how she's here at the Scarlet Chorus, though. That seems like something I wouldn't know. Um, yeah, we'll leave the athletics one for now. How did you come to join the Scarlet Chorus? Human pack called Scarlet Chorus is vicious, cunning, feral, like tribes, like Beast Woman. She snarls, but the sound is pleased and rumbling, nearly a purr as she cranes her face in the direction of the voices of the rats' war tent. Chorus human are dirty and reek like rotten meat, so easily shriek and tear at own throats, but also respect strongest of pack, and Beast Woman are strongest of all creatures. Our best predators, like Archon called Narat, packs fierce and ruthless Alpha, is mystic who can swallow prey, blood and bones whole, makes Beast Woman want to rot, fight, kill. Hmm. TMI, really, but sure, okay. Makes Beast Woman want to rot, fight, kill, she sighs hungrily. Makes Beast Woman want, uh, yeah, okay. I think, I think, uh, yeah. My lord. Hello, Star Lady. Uh, yes, amazing girl. Very much. Oh my. And how did I miss Casa sending 26 bits like 20 minutes ago? Oh my lord. Use them wisely on drinks. I shall. I shall use all 23, uh, 26 of those bits on drinks. Many drinks, actually. My lord. Here, have my coppers. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe I missed that. Blah. I'm so bad. Um, wow. I know. I'm so bad. I'm an, I'm, I'm a really bad avac. Uh, I don't know. I'm really tempted with the Atlantic now, but I, I feel at this point, it would be an entirely different signal. Hmm. Still. Uh, I, I don't think we're in a position where I'd need to show my strength at this point right now. So we're going to just leave that there. What's going on? Human has keen eyes, yes? Can see Beast Woman is disciplining insolent pack mate. She snaps a menacing sneer at the cowed Beast Man. Mewling, whimpering male. Night Yao will learn Beastman's rank in New Pack, or will not survive for many seasons longer. A soft growl burbles up from the back of his throat in response to her threat, but he keeps his eyes downcast, refusing to meet her gaze. Okay. What tribe are you from? Mm. She puffs her dirty, hairy teeth and purrs with pride. Close the throat was born of tribe with no name and no lands, called Summer Snout by Tearsman, who s stole Azure lands from tribe's ancestors. Then Close the throat became great stone stalker, slaughtered own slavers, and fought for tribe's freedom. Tribe who became strong, and breakable as stone, because of earth mystic called Archon Cairn. Oh, interesting. So she has uh, some sort of connection with Cairn. She sniffs at the memory. But now Cairn sleeps and dreams, drifting slowly into death in Stonelands. Hundred blood protects free tribe, and Claws at throat fights to kill more tearsmen as Scarlet Stalker. Oh. 
Okay, well, I think I'm going to leave that there. I'm fairly certain this would be me biting off much more than I can chew. But that was actually pretty cool. Uh, okay, we've got Scarlet Fury there. Scarlet Fury and Syrian still outside. Interesting. A young woman stands flanked by a pair of soldiers. The ornate headdress casting her brow lends her otherwise small figure an intimidating aspect. From gear to, gr to gown, everything about her starkly contrasts the wretched state of the camp. She looks both at ease and uncomfortable, composed in her element and completely unsure. She turns to you. Oh, look. Oh, voice actor. Father has returned. Have I gotten out of line? Have you come to punish me? Am I a bad girl? Or do you just want to use my power? Uh, with, I, excuse me? Her face takes on a mock serious demeanor as she speaks, and with her words you hear the sound of a breeze rustling through the forest. It's at the same time calming and distressing. The girl smiles. Do you remember me, Fatebinder? Now don't disappoint me. You used my flock as chaff. Oh, the yes, Coast. I remember. <laughs> you took my people, the followers of Siren, the Archon of Song. Ah, uh, wow, I'm already at, what, almost at favor too, my lord. Uh, conquest decision. When Siren, the Archon of Song, used her power to enthrall people in the Scarlet Chorus, her abilities worked too well. After the disfavored soldier attempted to enlist, conflict broke out between the armies. You allowed her to enthralled followers to be sent to the front lines to prove the value of conscription through action. She takes a small step forward. Uh, sorry, the gentle breeze of her words gains force as she, uh, her eyes harden ever so slightly. She takes a small step forward and the soldiers to her side move in, barring passage with their weapons. She looks at them and rolls her eyes. When she does, the sound of the approaching storm fades. Do I look like I can hurt him? She returns her gaze to you and leans forward as if to share a secret. Oh wow. Once again, loyalty with, with Sin. I can't see what my loyalty with Sin is. Honestly, what passes for guards these days, right? Nothing like the disfavored guards you gave me. It's a shame they died the way they did. During the Vellum Citadel campaign, Siren used their power to enthrall sages who crept beyond the stronghold. When the mages started to spout off forbidden knowledge to the forces of Kairos, you punished the disfavored soldiers responsible for killing the sages and ordered several members of the Legion to serve the Archon of Song as personal bodyguards. I remember that. Oh well, life in Kairos employees dangerous. At least it is for most people. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. These good people aren't here for my protection. Apparently I'm dangerous. But I guess you already knew that. Can't have me collecting followers again like I did in Lethian's Crossing, can we? I mean... Let's have a look at this. Lethian's Crossing, built in the shadow of Old Wall's Junction in the realm of heaven, Lethian's Crossing is a growing trading settlement. The nearby rivers are rich in iron ore, though the locals lack the technology to smelt it. In the years following Kairos' conquest of the Tears, the population of Lethian's Crossing swelled with refugees, fleeing the destruction of their, their homelands. The presence of the forge bound mining the iron, along with their guards, makes the makeshift settlement a vital resource of Kairos' armies. If some people started worshipping me... Take care, Shelab. Really such a bad thing? Is Kairos really so insecure to worry about a little competition? Ooh, now, now you're actually probably crossing the line, even for me. You're starting to, to uh, speak ill of the Overlord. Look at me! Do you think I seem dangerous? What harm can a 15-year-old girl cause? I'm only a child. Uh, that's why you're dangerous, probably. The smile falters. She looks down. Her hand moving to the headdress, her thumb tracing the edge of it along her jawline. She looks back up, the hard look back in her, high, her eyes. She regards you for a moment before continuing. So, Tunon's fate binder in the middle of a battlefield. Kairos must be desperate. You were sent to shame Ash and Narat into action, weren't you? I... that's... well, I mean, probably not that inaccurate. Ash certainly needs someone to dig a heel into his back only to distract him from his problem. She purses her lips in thought. But Narat, he's just a cat playing with a realm-sized mouse, isn't he? Hmm. 
Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It was in my turn to talk. No, we're not going to be going with that. And what problem does Ash have? You haven't heard? Now I find that fascinating. A representative of Cairo sent to deal with the Archons, and you weren't told the whole story. How scandalous. The disfavored are very close with one another. If one is lost, it's practically like losing a family member. Can you imagine how Ash feels after losing a handful of his men? She trails off and stands in thought for a few moments. Now, you didn't hear this from me, but since you were kind enough to give me that gift at the Vellum Citadel, I'll tell you a little bit more. Oh, okay. She looks around and leans in, lowering her voice. Ash's son is dead. Ah, uh, yes. We know. And no one knows what happened. At least they're not saying anything. There are rumors and accusations, but all it amounts to is dogs chasing their own tails. No wonder he's distraught. Um, fair. Anyway, we have a more important matter to deal with. There is something you can do to assist me. Very well. From the corner of your eye, you see Vers cap her hands to her ears, turning her head away from Sirin. Sirin's mouth opens in perfect O shape, and the sound that pours out is captivating, entrancing. It dampens the ambient bustle of the camp until it seems that nothing exists but her voice. Remove my helmet. The ruby headpiece on her brow flashes, as if in warning. Uh, at your service, Archon Sirin. Yes, mistress, right away, resplendent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we didn't have law high enough, I guess I would be for I would be forced to comply. Okay, so she that yeah that that all kind of this okay arc on a song. She can control people with her voice. Makes all kinds of sense. Makes all kinds of of sense. Well done, verse. But also, ha ha. Really, that's it. How disappointing. It was worth a try, I suppose. Though it appears to have been a colossal waste of effort. Oh, bless. Ah, oh, bless. Though, I wonder if I... Hmm, I wonder what would have happened if I I acquiesced. Or maybe if I, I had an even higher law skill. I hoped you would assist me in a delicate matter. But it appears you're more nuisance than help. I have no further use for you. Perhaps later. You're dismissed, Fatebinder. Hmm. Um. Yeah, so many options for a second playthrough. Not as powerful as you imagine yourself to be, are you? I mean, that would be full on. I don't think I want to do that yet. I could glare silently. I could just leave. But I don't think I really want to do that. I wanted to answer some questions first. You will answer some questions for me first. I said dismissed until I have further need of you. Your presence displeases me. This time her voice takes on a different quality. It screeches like a piece of flint stuck in a grinding wheel. You can feel it down your to your toes and you want nothing more than to make a hasty exit before the Archon inflicts more of her terrifying song. For the love of Kairos. That was the Archon of Song in the flesh. Darting his head for a furtive look back at Sirin, Lantry sighs in awe. Oh, here? We go way back. Keep walking, best not to offend her. Don't be dumb, so dumbstruck. Um. Hmm. <laughs> we go way back would be an interesting one. Uh. I mean, we've interacted, Sean. Uh, uh, don't be so dumbstruck. Dumbstruck? I don't exactly meet Archons on a regular basis. Maybe to you, this is just Judge's Day. Kind of. Uh, end conversation. Okay, well, fair enough. Uh, right, we need... Well, where is... Well, who we're looking for? We're meant to find... Uh, a camp to begin the assault. 
Oh yes, he'll be down here somewhere, I think. There we are. The eve of battle is upon us. Ready yourself for the siege of Endrian's well. With the edict looming, there is no turning back. The chorus is brave and fearless, but it lacks order. And if we lose discipline and tarry on our march, or falter in our siege, the edict will kill us before the Oathbreakers or the disfavored have the chance. An offer, Fatebinder. March with us. Add your strength to our tide of blades. The mob could learn from your example, and your prowess would certainly inspire. Uh, I will lead the vanguard of the Scarlet Chorus. I have some other questions. Hmm. Okay, I have some other questions. Was there anything else? What do you know of the Defavor Commander? Iron Marshal Arrhenius is a doting warrior, just like the Archon of War. She's one of the few select disfavored cautious and cowardly enough to be trusted with the Archon's iron toddlers. No doubt her primary qualifications include being related to Ash. The Legion's a little big into its pedigree, if you catch my drift. Keep insulting my commander and I'll slap that mask off your face. Not that I'm eager to see what's inside. Hmm. Um, I mean, to be fair, but hmm, I either pick a side here, and honestly, I kind of feel they're both in the wrong on this. We are literally about to siege. There's no time for this right now. No, not this time, perhaps. I will respectfully save your censure for when I need to act in a more despicable manner. That day is no, is no doubt nigh. We're not children to be corrected and set in line. I have long distrusted the court for treating us as such, but I won't challenge you at this juncture. He nods to the fifth eye. Say your peace about the Iron Marshal then. Though I am loath to speak highly of her, I cannot deny she's a brilliant swordswoman, a swordsman, and the other disfavoured seem to take her seriously, despite the serious stick that's propped up her backside. Ah, uh, okay. Very well. Oh, let's talk again. Eve of battle is upon us. Ready yourself for the siege of Endrian's well. With the edict looming, there is no turning back. I will lead the vanguard of the Scarlet Chorus. Very well. Hello, Aeolus. As I suspected, the call for glory sings to your heart's tune. The fifth eye claps his bloody glove together. The camp will mobilize soon. We will meet at the staging grounds of the Citadel. This will be a glorious hunt, dear Fatebinder. Something to tell the children. I don't think I want to tell them anything about what's going to happen next. My lord. I uh, travel to Vendrin's well, Citadel, and the Sister Scarlet Chorus with their assault. Very well. Okay, there's nothing further for me to do. Uh, actually, I'm going to see if Sinan has anything more to say. You there. The one in the tin barrel. Remove my helmet. <laughs> you address me, lady? Finer craftsmanship I have never seen. You wish the helmet removed. Barak hesitates before Sirin. He seems at once ready to follow her order and nervously uncertain. Do as she tells you, Barak. Um. Well. I. I mean. Hmm. <clears throat> If I was the sort of person who wanted to experience everything, I would be quick saving constantly and I would check out all these different options. But no, I think uh, playing playing around with the Siren's helmet will be something maybe for another playthrough, perhaps. But uh, I'm going to restrain Barak. Uh, you forcibly grab a hold of Barak by the shoulder plates and restrain him from moving in closer. The giant man looks ready to protest, but then regards you with sudden clarity. Uh, thank you. I don't know what came over me. Uh, I've got a funny feeling I do. Archon, with all due respect, 
We will keep our distance from each other. I would not engage with you again, accompanied or no. Once again, the worm dares to defy the songbird. Don't worry, little worm. One day the bird will get her prey. I, I mean, as long as the prey is an enemy, I think I'm okay with that. Should I try again? I think I will. Have you come to grovel before me? No, I wanted to see if you wanted to try and mind control any more of my minions, honestly. I was kind of interested in what might happen if you tried to mind control Lantry, frankly, but uh, I guess we're not going to find out. Poor Barrack. Sorry, dude. I didn't realize she'd go for you there, I, I promise. It was an accident, damn it. Okay, Vendrian's Well Citadel. Oh, this is, looks like it's going to be an interesting one. Will take you four hours, 45 minutes to complete your journey from the Scarlet Chorus Camp to Vendrian's Well Citadel. I accept. Is there a way that I can... What? Oh my lord, there's more places. Okay. Um, I kind of want to rest, though. Can I go back in? Yes, I can. Hmm. I want to rest and get rid of... Uh... Oh, actually, I think I've, I've leveled up, so I should have lost my death penalty. Fifth Eye is just ahead, cavorting with some blood chanters to the east. Okay. Now, this is going to be super, super teasy, I know, but... Be aware, I've probably only got about half an hour before I'm going to be wrapping up the stream, as I do need to uh, move on. But don't worry, we will be going and checking out Lady Shilab, who I believe will soon be streaming, some, or, or if she hasn't already started, some Staxel. But uh, we've got another half hour, but yeah, it will be a short one tonight. But we'll be probably uh, returning to this a little bit earlier in the day on Sunday, just so you're aware. Don't worry, Skade, we'll be back soon, I promise. Glory to the voices of Narat. The fifth eye salutes you, his masked face glancing nervously in all directions. Despite the rest of his body's otherwise confident posture, the mustering song is nearly complete. Soon comes the canticle of slaughter, and we will need the strong. He jabs a finger toward you to rise up and lead. By custom, you are judge, jury, and executioner. Today, we must ask that you take on the last and most sublime of your sacred duties. I kind of gave the fifth eye a bit of a, a bit of the, the essence of Narath there, I think. Okay. The best bluff is often the most obvious. The fifth eye points a bloody finger towards the main gate of the citadel. We charge for the gate, right into the Oathbreaker's doorstep. The horde should bring the defenders searching to the inside of the gate. Then we, we unleash our magic. Fire and panic will claim the Oathbreakers. The more concentrated the defenders, the better. What can we expect from the Oathbreakers? The Vendrian Guard will flail vigorously on their way out, but it will be for naught. In the dilemma between courage and overwhelming numbers, never wager on courage. The fifth eye gestures east. We are more concerned by the disfavored's present. They are likely waiting for us to engage with the enemy, so that they might surround us while occupied. Given that the edict compels us forward, we have a rousing melee ahead of us. What are the disfavored? Our scouts report the Iron Legionnaires moving in the area. It's obvious they have the same goals as we do. They are just a step ahead, it would seem. Make no mistake, the Oathbreakers will be a minor inconvenience. The foul disfavored will be more worthy challenge. We must stay alert. Okay. Ah, Leon is cautioning that we wrap up the stream a little bit early because apparently this scene may take longer. That is the kind of swallow that I'm completely on board with receiving. We'll just go through this early bit of the, the discussion, at least up until I can save, and then we'll wrap things up there. Thank you so much for the heads up on that one. Uh, I will have to check, of course, to see if uh, Lady Shelab is already streaming or not. First, uh, I shall do that now. Just to be certain. I'm sorry, this is a little bit of a departure from the norm, I know, but uh, we should be fine. Uh, and as I said, we will be back by Sunday. Probably a bit earlier in the day so that we can have a solid blast on the game. This is the sort of game that I like to take in at least 10 hour chunks. 
Uh, more, if possible. We'll see. Uh, right. Okay, I'm ready to do this. Our blood chanters are re uh, readying a conflagration that should take the gate off its hinges. But at the same time, the Oathbreaker mages are warding the gate with protective magic. He points to the northwest. I need someone to scale the wall and kill the mages maintaining the ward. If I send these unwashed pukes, their corpses will clog the parapet. This task requires your strength. If you are wounded in battle, come see me at once and I will tend to the bleeding. Though my methods do nothing for the pain. <laughs> Enemies inbound! I call first blood! Okay, yeah, I don't really fancy your chances there, mate. Alright then, we're on the move. Let's go ahead and save the game here. Donk! We haven't saved the cave in quite some time, to be fair. Okay, um... We will be uh, going ahead and wrapping the stream up a little bit earlier than I was expecting. About 20 minutes earlier than I was expecting. Thank you so much for the uh, heads up, everyone. That uh, we might want to have this entire scene in one sitting i do appreciate that uh but yes thank you for joining us it's only been like an hour and 36 minutes i feel kind of bad i was hoping to go for for uh two hours at least but there will be plenty on sunday so hopefully you don't mind waiting and again the reason for the delay was because i kind of got dragged out for a couple of drinks earlier on when i realized i'd crested 200,000 subscribers on youtube it was, it was a bit of a milestone and uh it was cause for celebration and i would have felt bad saying no 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 i need to work um so hopefully you can understand why today's stream will be a little shorter than most but Sundays will be possibly extra long to make up for it.